Corporal Galus Pritchard, United States Army, Korea, the Forgotten War. I interviewed Galus Pritchard in Fargo, North Dakota. It was June 10, 2021, about 18 months ago. Galus is still with us today. He's almost 91 years old. Tells a great story. Made the Incheon landing with the 2nd Division in Korea and carried a 57 recordless rifle. You need to look that up on the internet if you don't know what that is. One of the weapons used during the Korean War. But Galus is an amazing man. I, I love this man. He's one of my most recent interviews that I've done and, and he tells a great story. I'd like to thank Steve Peralt for sponsoring Galus' story back in June of 2021. Steve brought me to Fargo. I interviewed him and some of the other veterans that were up there. I've been to Fargo several times, but Steve's a Vietnam veteran. I'm going to be featuring his story on one of my upcoming videos uh, here on the Voices of History channel. Steve, I say God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your love for Galus and for just your dedication to our country, and you're a great, great friend. I also want to thank Brandon Glidden for helping with these Korean stories. Brandon has sponsored a lot of these stories and bringing to light the history of what happened during the Korean War. It's called a Forgotten War, folks, and that should, should not be so. So thank you, Brandon, for helping educate people as to what really happened from the source, from the veterans themselves. So I'm happy to share Galus Pritchard's story with you folks, and he loves sunflowers, and so do I. But I, I want to ask you to consider something. Um, you know, somebody says, you know, why do you sponsor an interview? Well, you know, folks, just like anything else in life, it takes a lot of resources to produce these videos and I don't monetize or sell commercials, so, you know, I ask for your help. I don't, you know, I don't say you have to do it, but some of you have done it and I appreciate that and the veteran families appreciate that and I know those watching these videos do too, so I would encourage you to become a sponsor. Sponsor one of these veterans. There's a link in the video description or on my website and you can click on it, see all these faces, all these voices of history, all these veterans, and you can decide who you'd like to sponsor. If you'd like to donate to my work, you can do that through the comments section. So freedom is not free, folks. Freedom is earned. We're fighting for the same freedoms today in our own country that our veterans fought for on foreign soil. So I'm happy to bring Galus Pritchard's story to you today, Korea, the Forgotten War. Subscribe to this channel. Share these videos, folks. Let's keep this thing going. And uh, I'm just really happy. Galus, I salute you, sir. God bless you. You're 89 now. 89 and 11 months. Okay. What year did you go into the military? 52. Army? Army. How old were you in 52? Well, uh, about 20, not 19. Out of high school? Oh, yeah. No, I couldn't. I had to quit high school. You had to quit high school? Yeah. Why is that? Well, the war started. I was 11 years old when the war started, 10 and a half, when they, started, when they bombed Pearl Harbor. Well, my older brother, he had no chance to stand on the farm. He went. And um, then my brother that was just other older than I am, my, I had an uncle that uh, was a manager of some manager up in Duluth. And they were taking kids 16, 17. So my cousin Fred and my brother Donald, they sneaked up to the range. My uncle to told them, go to the range, you'll get a job. So that left me in 1931 to 41 is 10 years. Uh, and that so the war started in, in December, so 
Who is left to take care of the farm? Me. You. My sister, Vida, said I still can't figure out what, how he did it, but, but I did it. And you quit school, stay home and farm. You mentioned Pearl Harbor, right? Yeah. Do you remember, you, how old were you, 10 or 11? About, about 10 and a half years old. W do you remember where you were when you heard the news? Yeah. Taking care of the uh, hostings, <laughs> the cows, and the pigs. And who we, Well, uh, we heard it, a neighbor came over. And he said, my dad's name was Ray. He said, listen to the radio. So they turned on, we had a battery radio. Half the time the battery did, was dead, but he did get enough to listen to Roosevelt say that they bombed Pearl Harbor at seven o'clock. So then, you know, you didn't know what's gonna happen, you know. So right away they volunteered the draft board. Well, my oldest brother, George, he was fed to go because they had the, board draft, the draft board in Detroit Lake says, you gotta go, George. So George and our neighbors, they all went. And then that took even the men that was working in the mines, iron mines. They were, that was a big thing, go to work in the iron mines. Well, my uncle, my dad's brother, was, had something to do with, with the mines. He was, and uh, so when he came down, and like February, because uh, I was just, just a sophomore, I went up, I think I went to school about three months, high school. And then when they took, when Donald, my brother George, or my brother Donald, and his cousin Fred, they were about the same age. They all went to the Iron Range. Well, what happened? who's going to milk the cows? Dad, had, Dad always said he had a sore back. So you're looking at him. I stayed there till the war was over. But I learned, you know, we had trash machines. We didn't have the modern uh, as they have now. Everything was pitch pitchfork and shovel and your name meant. Did you want to go in the military though? You were, you no, but somebody called me a draft dodger and I said, that's it. I had a younger brother, 1952. And uh, I said, I don't like to be called a draft dodger. I said, that's it, I'm going. I didn't have to go, I could have still stayed on the farm, but I went and was sent to Fort Riley, Kansas. And when we had the South, there was a girl there said, I'm from, I'm from Fort Riley too. <laughs> she was from Fort Riley. Remember that? The girl, girl from the, uh, you remember when she yeah. come up and yeah. said she was from Fort Riley? I think I remember that. And um, so uh, I stayed, that was 52. And um, didn't have a choice. How to delay and route them 11 days get to get to Fort, Fort Lawton, Washington. I think I was one, we were one of the last companies that went through Fort Lawton. So what was your job in the military? What was your MOS? You really want to know? Mm -hmm. I did everything in the Army. First of all, I was, I, um, I was pretty good on a rifle called the 57 Rifle Squad. That took out the enemy machine guns. Uh, and it, it wouldn't go, go uh, good on a tank, it wasn't big enough, but you could, if you hit, hit it right, you were right. So when I got to, when I landed at Inchon, oh, I have only spent 16 weeks in the Army here in the United States. My 16 weeks of basic training, and I, and um, 17 days on the, on the ship going to Camp Drake, got my fighting equipment, and landed in Incheon, Korea. What was the what was the landing like? Oh, it it was a little rough, but, um, like, uh, but when we landed, that's one thing about it. Where it, it, they must have been in this. I went with the second division. They said that's one of the worst. They saw more fighting. They lost more men in the second division than all the rest of them put together. And. Um, 
So I landed in Incheon with the, and I was assigned to the second division. And um, so our, there was a sergeant there. He said, what was your job? What did you do in Fort, in Fort Riley? I said, I trained on that 57 recoilless rifle. Good. He said, you're going to be a... So I carried a 57 recoilless rifle all the while I was in Korea. Part of 52, all of 53. That was over in July of 53. And then you had a lot of cleaning up to out there. And I, part of 54, then I got to come home. Well, let's go back to Korea. Now, listen, you got into combat over there. You right over there, yeah. I'm... You've told some stories in the schools, I remember, but tell me about the first time you got into combat. Was it the Chinese or the North Koreans, or who were you fighting? It was both. Okay. Yeah, it was both. Um, so tell me, did you ever, how far were you from the enemy? Were they close? Oh, yeah. Take uh, Easter of 53. We were on a, on a place called The Hook. And I had a buddy there that never made it back. Tell me what happened. Uh, well, we were, we were supposed to take this hill because the enemy had it, had it on... Um, uh, if we hadn't taken that hill, a lot of them would, uh, wouldn't have... We wouldn't have been here, but the second version, yeah, we'll do it. So we, we mounted that hill on the hook, and I, I don't know why they call it the hook. You couldn't get it off. You couldn't get on it. But we made it out back and had to go to Hawaii or Japan for a couple of days or a couple of weeks and back to the front I went. Well, you talked in the schools. You said your best buddy was killed on Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday. What was his name? I can't remember it. I tried it, but you know, after 50 years. Um, so you were firing a recordless rifle? Yeah. Machine gun? <laughs> Well, it wasn't a machine. I wish I'd have bought a picture of it, because then you really could have saw what it was. And um, so, but I carried that thing, and anyway, um, we, 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 one time we were replacing a company. I didn't mean, but anyway, I carried that 57 up that hill, and that must have been a squad leader, or platoon leader of another company that we were replacing. And he said, you guys complain, look at what he's doing, <laughs> giving that 57. So you were in combat. Yeah. And, got uh, a combat ribbon, you got the combat MC, yeah. Were you there when it was really cold, or was it just... Oh, yeah. Uh, Tell me about I, the cold. Oh, it was cold. You didn't have the right boots and the right clubs. And, and, um, but it didn't last long. You know, I got over there like in the last part of 52 and all of 53. Well, when, my, when we were up on the line, the weather was just about, you know, we, get, we was getting better. The weather was getting warmer. Because Korea was still in the Northern Hemisphere. So we had about the same, but the country itself was much different. But I'm here with the flat, flat country. I never did really have to live like in the mountains or like that, but I, I know what they were like. But, but um, and then uh, after, um, but that's all we saw. We, I, I did see a few rice paddies after the, like May or June, where they could, and they could make a rice paddy and, but, um, but I made it back, and, and that, uh, I guess that's the main thing. Well, but a lot happened over in Korea. You a know, lot of people don't know about the Korean War. And I produced a film on the Korean War. It's called Korea, the Forgotten War. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. It's called a Forgotten War. <laughs> yeah. But um, we lost just a lot of men. The second division, had it, I think, we had it. Bad as the Marines did, but you know the Marines did this, and they did. We were just, we did it and kept them all shut and kept. Yeah. Have you heard about the Chosen Reservoir? Oh yeah. At Korea in Korea. Yeah. That's where they first fought. Mm-hmm. And the Chinese came over the border. Yeah. 
and they attacked in hordes. Yeah. Did you see any of that? Oh yeah, I was at the Yellow River. And uh, then after that, we moved back. And then, then uh, he got fired. MacArthur then got fired. And that's about the time I got there, was when he got fired. And then we took, uh, Matthew Ridgeway took his place. And um, so then we started, because uh, when, uh, when I got over there, I didn't have to go very far before you're in the front lines. And when I landed at Inchon, so they were getting pushed back, the Marines were getting pushed back trip out to the ocean in the second division. And um, the second division got over there like in 50, um, the tail end of 51 and part of 52, and when they first got them over there. And um, so, but when I landed at Inchon, the front end of the boat went over and I, and uh, then, um, we were, uh, we had it, we were going to make it a die, so, but... Um, Do you have any pictures of yourself? Do you guys have any pictures of him back then in the military uniform? Not in, over in Korea so much. Oh yeah, a lot of yeah, those pictures. Well, either way, I always ask veterans that I interview to either email me a picture. If you, you have the ability to scan a picture and email it. You know, I can have somebody. Well, I, uh, maybe you mentioned somebody in your family that is. Your, yeah. Maybe it. somebody could scan some whatever pictures that you have of him, you know, career or even a graduation photo, whatever. Just it doesn't matter. And then you could, uh, I'll give you my email address and you could send okay. it to me because I want that from Galas. Okay. I should have brought those pictures because I, I got a lot of pictures of the '57. Yeah, well, when you could conclude that the gun and, and that group. Too, and. So. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah that, that I got one standing on a hill and just ready to knock out a machine gun and and uh, I don't know who took the picture, but anyway, when they came back from from um, Yokohama, yeah, here, they, that's where you usually send them. But uh, a fellow was going to uh, leave, and I got a radio. I still got my army radio. But the first one, I got a, we were building a combo trench and um, trying to keep dry. And, and uh, so I put that, that short wave radio out there. I could, you could listen to it. You know, the enemy zeroed on that radio, knocked her off, <laughs> knocked her off the hell. Then, then I got another one. And, but, um, yeah, it was, um, but uh, talk about the winter, it, it was really, uh, I didn't spend too much time in the river. I got there in the tail end of 52, and um, then, then 53, January 53, well, for March, and it was there. But then they, they, they really were pushing you when, you, when they were signing up, when they had to start signing the peace treaty, or. They didn't want to give up an acre, <laughs> so, but. Um, so you were in combat the whole time you were there? Yeah, until it was over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, we did, uh, we had to, we did take out, go to the rear end, the rear, rear, the rear uh, end, they call it, of the, of the division, and then we'd wait for replacements and we'd go, out, go up there again. So uh, was there a ceasefire in July? Or yeah, but she she quit right now. Yeah, when they when they signed that, then in, in fifty three July of fifty three, there was no more, there was no more shooting. Did you uh, go up and shake the hands of the guys? No, you. I could have. <laughs> we we they they hated. We'll say by that door, and they said that they wouldn't trust it, but they didn't fire. And we didn't fire at them. No, that was good. But then there was so much stuff to clear out because I think that, um, how they ever did it, I don't know. But we had to take down all our fighting equipment, move that to the rear. Yeah. 
So do you remember, did they, the Chinese a lot of times would, would blow bugles before they attacked? Oh, yeah. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Tell me what you remember about that. Well, they made the, we didn't know it was a bugle or not, but you heard this noise, and you knew then you better either shit or get off the bar. <laughs> Shouldn't say it on my TV, but, uh, but no, but, uh, and um, because they threw everything at it that you could get. And we weren't the only division. The 24th were there, and because um, they they threw everything at us that they wanted, because they didn't want to give up an acre. So. So what's that like as a young man, seeing people die and oh, death yeah. and being? It around? took a while to get over it, but um, but you know there wasn't that to help when I came back home. Well, I wasn't the only one. You just went back home, got, got a job in the line, in the mines, and and um, went from there. Yeah. There was no help. No, no help or nothing. Oh yeah, there was too. You call, call it the fifty-two twenty. You got twenty dollars for fifty-two weeks. <laughs> that's what. That's what you want. <laughs> that's a lot of money. Twenty dollars for fifty. Call it the fifty-two twenty club. I never heard that. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you weren't doing it for the money, though, were you? No. no. My dad said I was crazy. I went to work. I had a buddy that uh, was living in. Um, well, his grandparents had a uh, cabin on Straight Lake in Osage, Minnesota, and. Uh, so I said to my buddy, let's go to Fargo and try to find a job. So we did. And um, I started working at, uh, for a farmer out by Davenport. And I said, <laughs> the first day I got there, I said, where's your milk pail and your separator? And the boss said, well, we don't have that. Good, I'm going to stay because <laughs> I got tired of milking cows. Your story is great. You know, I've got a lot of Korea War stories, but um, there's not many World War II veterans left anymore. No. And the Korean War veterans are getting thinner too. Well, look at me. I'll be 90. Yeah. 90 the 1st of July. Are you proud to be a, a Korean War veteran? Well, I'm, well, I'm glad to be a veteran. Okay. Whether it's a Korean or Vietnam or... Yeah. Does Memorial Day or Veterans Day mean anything? Oh, you bet it does. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my mom saw six of us put the uniform on. We had seven boys. And, huh? We all went. Worst thing you could be called is a draft dodger. Boy, yeah. Huh? Did everybody come back home? Yep. Um, George is the only one that, I, that saw, you might say, saw action. George had one, my brother had uh, one day left on the, uh, to uh, invade Japan, but they bombed the bomb, so. So we all came back and, um, have you had any nightmares or bad I used nightmares? to have them. Mm -hmm. yeah. How did you get through that? Just work yourself through it. Yeah. You didn't go to the VA? Well, yeah, afterwards, afterwards, I, as I got older, my first one was when I went down. To, you just went to the VA for medical reasons. Yeah, for medical. Went down to the Fort Snelling and had a heart attack. Had a new heart I guess put on, and um, came back and still still around. Did you stay in touch with a lot of your buddies? No, before? we did. Never did. No reunions or anything. No, no, no. Tell me the the full. Division, you said second division. The second division, Indian Head. Call it the old Indian Head. 
was there a, a company or a, 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 a battalion attached to that? or Oh, yeah, there were three, four companies. So what company were you with? I was in uh, 38th, the 2nd Division, the 38th you, uh, Regiment. When I say religious the second man, divi- I mean, you, uh, did your faith help you through these hard times? How did you get and, through And this- uh, 2nd Platoon. What was your rank? Well, uh, when I got there, they see when I, when Eisenhower got in, he froze rank, so you couldn't make any rank. So I was doing a sergeant's job, but uh, because I was a platoon sergeant, or well, I took over a platoon when they when uh, he was shipped home, but the war was over, so it didn't matter, and it didn't really matter to me because I wasn't going to stay in anyway. I could have been a buck private all the way through as far as rank goes, but they wouldn't let you be a rank. My first sergeant, my first platoon leader got shot when we were walking down the chow in the Camo Trench and the mud was knee deep. He said, I'm going to, I'm going to walk down. And I said, well, there's an F4 around here somewhere. We know that. And I suppose he, he went about Hundred yards and got hit by that F.O. We knew there was one around, but we could never catch him. So then I went back, and I got a hold of a my buddy. They had, they had three weapons in a platoon, in a rifle platoon. One of them was a weapon, the, uh, the 57 recoilless rifle, the 60 millimeter mortar, and a B.A.R. So when he got hit, I went up there and I said, I watch your wife and the way you go, go get some breakfast. It's just breaking day. I think I burnt the barrel out of a 30 caliber machine gun because there was a damn thing went like that. He wouldn't shot him, but and um, but um, but I didn't know him really too well because we just got over there. But the one we got like from Easter Sunday. When we were taken on a place called the Hook, and he got well, I was with him all the time, and he was with me. He was from Indianapolis, Indiana, and he said, "You ever get down there? You come on down there. We'll we'll go go ride the racetrack." And so, but never did. He didn't um, make it back. So, are your brothers alive? Yeah. No, there's only one left. Out of, out of seven, well, there's two left. And my, I got my my youngest brother, my oldest brother was ten years, uh, ten years older than I was, and my youngest brother is ten. I'm ten years older than he was, so there was a you might say there was a twenty and a thirty and a forty. <laughs> George was nineteen twenty, I was nineteen thirty, forty, and my kid brother was forty, forty one. Wow. Galus, tell me what freedom means to you. Oh boy, I mean a lot. Um, uh, it, um, freedom means a hell of a lot, boy. And you know, I saw a lot of that, but when I saw those kids going in school, one of them just sitting right there. I wouldn't have traded on it for a million bucks. I'd do it again. I had two kid brothers, fellas, when they, 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 we were on a farm. And then when I got, when I went there, dad said, that's it, I'm going down. So he sold everything and he kept the land, but he was old. And then he uh, bought a place in Park Rapids and. And uh, they, but um, when I left, the, the, so did the cows and the tractor. <laughs> and, uh, so how, how important is it for the, the younger people to learn about what you went through? It's important, isn't it? Well, what I saw the other last time, oh, all these kids, congratulating me, that was it. You know, I couldn't ask for any better than what those kids did. They did this over better. Because you were there when they all stood up. But they stood up for a lot of us. 
Well, I wasn't probably the only one I stood up for, but I sure remembered it. Well, it's a life-changing program for a lot of the students. Mm -hmm. they, they don't know a lot about freedom, and then you come and you talk, and they understand it better once you've talked to them. Oh, yeah. You know, that's why it's important to tell the stories. And, uh, but, uh, In your presentation, you talked about Old Baldy. Yeah, that's about one of the main hills, like T-Bone, Pl Bloody Ridge, and the Old Baldy. And then they had a hill called, like, we called it Papasan. It looked like it was bigger, but Old Baldy was the main, main one that we had to take. And um, because um, it was a t one of the tallest um, ridges out there. And uh, yeah, I knocked out, I guess, about 10, 15 machine guns that day, that early morning. So what do you remember about these battles? You were telling us a little bit here. Just, uh, was there, were you fighting the Chinese or the? Well, they were both. Yeah. They were both. Like when we were close, close to the Yellow, Yellow River, they were both everything. But I got to give the, the Air Force, boy, they came in and they, they, let, us, they let us know who was, who was boss and what we could expect from them. But, um, and so you, lo you lost other friends over there? Oh, yeah. Wounded or killed? Not just the one on Easter no, Sunday, but no, you lost Oh, them. yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you have time to bury them? What did you do? Yeah, the, after uh, we take the one for his Sunday. After we put him, put, they put him on a truck. He would history. I'm ready to they had another one. You couldn't say hi, goodbye, or nothing. You just kept on going. And I guess that's the way it was. Everybody was. They got killed. Well, let let them get take him. You, uh, your job wasn't taken. Um, Let me ask you about the flag. What does the American flag mean to you? Oh boy. I think that's the first thing we try to put up. When we take a hill or something, it doesn't matter what it was. If we could get that flag up. Remember a hill I went, I and four other guys went and put a flag up during the night. We started. <laughs> We stole the North Korean ones and put the American boy in and shoot, try to shoot that flag down. Holy mackerel. Yeah. Does it seem like a long time ago or does it seem like yesterday sometimes? Sometimes it's like, like yesterday and, yeah. I probably told more right here than I did well since the last time we were together. Have you ever sat down and told your story like this? No, no, no. no you're the only one that I suppose years ago I would have said, oh, I'm, "I ain't telling you nothing." To... But now it's uh, sixty years or better. Yeah, there's, there's a gal that has been with me for sixty years. You've been married sixty years. In June. Sixty-one years. Sixty-one years. What's, what's the secret of being married 61 years? Trust. I mean, we only have one checkbook. And do I make it? Uh, together. I mean, I, I don't know. Kids? Um, Children? We have four. Uh, got four, yeah. Grandchildren, great-grandchildren? Oh, yeah. Four grand, four children, four great, four grandchildren, and four great-grandchildren. Wow. But trust, I think. What wouldn't you say? Faith, faith. That's what I would say. Tell me about your faith. Oh, well, right here. We got married in Park Rapids and moved out here, and we've been just church. It's been, been for 60 years. This church? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Catholic uh, faith. Yeah, yeah. Right, Steve? Yeah. yeah. Then we were on the farm for 40-some years, same place. 
And then after the farm, Phyllis got sick, what a kind of a job I got, I was taking care of the cemetery. <laughs> Catholic cemetery, right, up north here. Yeah. Did that for 10 years. And then when I got 80, I said, that's it. I'm going to hang it up, so. So do you want to be 100? Oh, well, I feel like I do now. <laughs> yeah. But I know I'm slowing down. And what did you do after the war? Farm. Okay. Came out here and got a awesome. job farming. There you go. That's when I, when I, he hadn't, didn't have a milk pill and he didn't have a cow, so I stuck it out till fall. But the only thing is, uh, when fall came, there was nothing to do. You couldn't farm anymore. So I started working for an international harvester dealer. But first of all, I met her on a blind date. <laughs> and. Uh, Started working, her dad gave me a name, name of a company here in Fargo to get a job, and I did it. So I worked for Kelly International Harvester until I took over a farm. So how did that blind date go? Well, we're still married. <laughs> 61, know, 61. <laughs> his sister for umpteen years. I knew all his family except... Well, well, see, when they moved to town, my folks moved to town, they all went to school, same... Catholic Church, so, yeah. and um, so I didn't. So you've been married 61 years, so were you, was he in the military then when? I didn't, I didn't know him until I was a senior in high school. Okay. I didn't even know where, I didn't know anything about him. Okay, because we're talking now um, mm -hmm. 70 years ago. Yeah. That he was in Korea. Must have been almost 70 years, yeah. Yeah, because we're about eight and a half years difference in age, so it's. You know, I just... So what happened after the first blind date? Did you call her up again on your cell phone and say, hey... We didn't have cell phones. I'll tell you how it happened. I when, uh, when we first met, I went out there to see her. Sunday when I got you home. You drove your over there? What? You drove your <laughs> no. tractor? Yeah. <laughs> no, but her dad did. So um, we put a bail in hay. So I started running the bailer. Her brother said, you better marry him. He knows how to run the bailer. <laughs> That's good. That's good. And the rest is history. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, I went to the, got married in 60, June of 1960 and came to this church and the next week and been here ever since. Wow, that's a great story. Yeah. So if, if, if something ever happens to you someday, are you going to be buried at a veteran cemetery? No, we're going to be buried in the Catholic cemetery in Park Rapids. Because my grandparents are buried there, my parents are buried there, Phyllis is buried there, she's got a sister buried there. So you were born in 31? Yeah, okay. July 1st, 1931. And the... Uh, the they bombed Pearl Harbor in 41, December of 41. So I was, and my birthday was in July, so I was about 10 and a half years old when I started running my own horse, team of horses and running a thrash machine, Saddle Villa. Do you think we're losing our freedoms today in our country? Well, I don't, I don't think so. But I mean, you had, Things are a lot different than it was. But I don't think that the freedom, of course, there's a lot of it, you know, down Minneapolis, you know, this, the, the Negroes, they figured they're the college ones. They're doing something like they killed this, killed this girl, of, how old was she last week? 14 years old in, on a rail, on a, going over to stay, stay with her mom. You know, that shouldn't happen. I mean, it, that's when we're losing our freedom right there. I'm gonna ask you to do something at the end of the interview that I ask all my veterans, okay? When I, when I ta ask you, could you look into the camera and do a salute from where you're seated when I ask you? Mm -hmm. Can you do that? Want, you want me to stand up? No, because the camera's down here. This is good, but um, 
If you could just look into the camera, Galas, and do a salute. If you want to say something or not, just do a salute. Thank God I'm still here. <laughs>